for this illustration, two things that need to come to mind are basically linear programming is we have maximization concept and we have the minimization concept. When you're talking about maximization concept, you're talking about basically anything positive. So if you're trying to maximize, you're trying to maximize profit. But if you're talking about minimization, you're talking about minimizing cost. But for this question, we're talking about only maximization. So this question is just talking about how the company wants to maximize profit, right? So what we have here is a bank gives loans and advances using demand deposits and savings deposits. So what we represent loans as, so what we have here is advance is represented as X1 and then loans are represented as X2. They are called um, just basic equations that will represent what each of these amounts. Okay, let me break it down. Advance representing X1 is in the equation we're about to um, um, elaborate. We cannot come and be writing 3,000 loans plus 2,000. It keeps it, it, no, it makes it an equation where you have something like 3,000 X1 plus 2,000 X2. You get that, right? So it's just putting in an equation format so that you don't have to start writing out a whole, 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 whole lot and it gets confusing. So when you're putting it in arithmetic, um, representing it, these are representations. So what we have is anywhere we see advances, we represent it as X1, and anywhere we see loans, we represent it as X2, right? So it says a bank gives loans and advances using demand deposits and savings deposits. Each advance takes 3DD, I need you to understand this. The advance now has three demand deposits and one savings deposit, right? And then each loan, that's X2, one demand deposit and two savings deposits. This three demand deposits, so for advances, I need you to understand that advances are what like maybe current holders have, right? Current holders are entitled to just, let's say these are current account holders and then these are savings accounts, basically. So there are two sets of customers. Those that have advances are those that are salary workers that are working in the organization, while loans are for the external people. So for those internal workers, those working in the bank, they are entitled to three demand deposits and one savings deposit. While those that are coming from outside to come to the bank are entitled to one demand deposit and two savings deposits. Are you with me? I don't know whether you mean. Yeah. So the internal people are entitled to this, while the external people are entitled to this. Just at the back of your mind, put that at the back of your mind. While loans are external, do you understand? So if we are going to put this in an arithmetic format, we are going to have the DD and the SD constraints, right? The SD equation or the DD equation. So remember that this is X1. So on that advances, how many DD is given? So that's 3x1. And then under loans, how many DD is given? 1x2. So it was this DD and this DD that comes here. Because this is the DD constraint. Do you get it? I don't know where you get it. DD. Then for the SD, do you understand? It will be this plus this. So it's going to be 1x1, that's this one, for the SD constraint plus 2x2. Right? So... It goes further to say that the bank has only a total now of, this is the constraint function now, constraint, right? Remember, this is the maximum that the bank has. It has a total of 9DD and 8SD. So under DD now, that's this DD line, we put the total there is 9. So we have less than or equal to, the summation of this should give you less than or equal to 9, right? That's the maximum that it can give. While the summation of this should give you less than, this inequality gives you less than or equal to, what's that there? SD. 8, right? So we have less than or equal to 8. Are you with me? So we have 9DD and 8SD as the total. So that's where this 9 and this 8 come from. Are you with me? Are you with me? Then it goes further to say that it gives X1 advances and X2 loans, which I've already explained. Each advance brings four Naira profit and each loan five Naira profit. And remember, the aim of any organization, like I said, maximization and minimization is to maximize profit. So the profit function here, which we can represent as Z, could be given as 
um, each advance, advance is represented as x1 bar, so it will be each advance brings 4 naira profit, that is 4 x1, plus each loan gives 5 naira profit. Loan is x2, so we have 5 x2, and, and this becomes our objective function, subject to this constraint. Are you clear? Good. So, yeah? Yes. So, this objective, like I said the first time, the objective, picture this again, we're going back to the millionaire. So, this is us trying to be millionaires. Remember, I said the objective here was to become a millionaire. And then the constraint was a total of 2 million. So, even if you're going to be a millionaire, the maximum you're going to be is 2 million. So, if this is the objective, if this is what they want to achieve, Whatever this is going to get cannot go more than this. It cannot go beyond 9 or 8. It's going to be within this profit. So this is constrained by this. Are you with me? So this is our constraint function, and then this is our objective function, basically. So moving ahead, we now have to come and remove these inequalities, right? So for removing these inequalities, you have to put slacks. Let me explain slacks now. If you have 4 plus 3 plus x, equal to 13. 4 plus 3, does it give you 13? No. So, if I write it like this, 4 plus 3 is equal to 13. Does this make sense? So, this x puts a level of sense into it. So, it's the same thing that is happening here. You're trying to put the slacks to make it an equality sign. So, it's now when we get what x is, it eventually gives us 13. Yeah. Are you with me? So, what we're going to do here is, we know now that all these constraints are connected. Everything is interconnected. Because becoming a millionaire is dependent on the constraint. So if we're going to spread this and put the slacks into each of them, we know that we have how many variables? We have one, two, and three variables. So if we're going to spread this, the DD constraint, we're going to have um, three x1, this gets a little tricky, plus one x2, plus, we're going to represent the slacks as s. Slacks will be represented as s. So plus, anywhere we see s1, S1 is representing the DD constraint. S2 represents the SD constraint. And then Z represents the objective function. For the objective, for the objective, so that it doesn't confuse us, all right? So for this one, we are putting S1, S1, because this is the DD constraint and it's represented as S1. And this is the DD constraint we are talking about here. So 1S1 plus 0S2 plus 0Z will be equal to 9. Don't worry, the second one will make sense out of it now. Just watch the second one. For the SD now, that's the second one. It will be 1x1 plus 2x2 plus 0s1 plus 1s2 plus 0z is equal to 8. Now, the slacks, like I told you, right? You can see that 1 is representing the DD constraint. I told you S1 represents the DD constraint. Yeah. Uh -huh. S2 represents the SD constraint, yes. and Z represents the objective. So this is the DD constraint we are talking about. Yes. So the only slack that concerns us here is, so, is so S1. S1. So basically, uh, it's saying that whenever, we, anytime we have um, S1, mm -hmm. we have DD, we have S1. DD is S1, SD is S2. So see the DD here is represented as 1, the SD is represented as 1 here for so S2. So basically saying we have 1 S1, mm -hmm. No S2 or Z. Then for S2, that's the SD. We have no S1. We have one S2, but no Z. Then for the Z, we now have um, 4X1, right? Plus 5X2, plus 0S1, plus 0S2, plus 1Z, equal to, we don't have anything here, so it's going to be 0. Does it make sense now? Now, we don't need all these x ones. We've opened it. We've spread this, right? So we are going to put this just as numbers, simplify it. At this point, I think I might need to use this side of the board. So if I'm simplifying that, if I'm going to simplify that, I'm going to have for the DD, right? All I'm going to have is just put the numbers three, one. What's the next distance there? One. one. What's the next one? Zero. 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 Am I correct? Yeah. 
31100, right? And it's equal to, okay, you can put the plus, you can put the plus to that. It's where we're putting it in the table so we can remove this. Okay. Equal to what? Nine. For the SD, we... Okay. So, what happened is, we removed all this X1, X2, we just put the numbers so that we can plug it into the table. So we have 3 plus 1 plus 1 plus 0 plus 0. That's 3 plus 1 plus 1 plus 0 plus 0 is equal to 9. We've expanded it. What we did is we removed this inequality here and changed it to an equality because of that example I gave. The, balanced it with the slacks. Then the next one is going to be 1 plus 2 plus 0 plus 1 plus 0 is equal to 8. And then for the Z, it gets tricky here and I'll explain it. What we are going to have now is, it's very funny, it's going to be minus 4, minus 5, plus 0, plus 0, plus 1 is equal to 0. Eh? Why did it change to minus? Because these are slacks, they are not existing numbers. They are not, they are not figures. So they don't have any existence. They are just representations that a slack is there. So it's not because of the fact that minus one affects you. Exactly. The only minus, why I put this minus is what I'm going to explain. This minus five and minus four is a very simple one. So in real life, if you have siblings and take for example, your dad is about to send you money. I want to make this as simple as possible so that anybody can get it. And your dad is about to send you money and he says, you and your junior brother, do you people have money? He says, your junior brother called me and said he needs money. You two, do you have money? What will you say? Thank you. Even if you have money in your account. Every natural, rational human being will always assume a negative position financially to gain what? More. Like I said, every rational human being wants more to less. Because you know naturally, if you tell another human being, I have more, they tend to say, okay, you're comfortable. There's no need to get. But if you want to get more from another person, you have to plead from a place of, Assuming zero. That's, sorry, that's the reason why you said that we're always trying to maximize Max, Thank you, that's the word. I was about to even get there and you finished it for me. So the aim is to maximize profit. Every organization is trying to maximize profit. So when they're about to start analyzing their books, they don't assume they have anything. They assume we're on zero. How do we make this money? Are you with me? Yeah. So when you assume a negative, when you assume zero, indirectly what you've done is if you had 4,000, I'm using green to write this, if you had 4,000 in your account, and you tell your dad you don't have money, what you did is you did minus another 4,000. So you've assumed a negative position. Hence, this minus 4. Okay. Does it make sense now? Yes. Good. So it just comes from the rational behavior of human beings. Every human being assumes less to more. Are you with me? Yes. So when we have this, we can now pull it out and then plug it in our table. And I think that's what we should do next.